Hi, welcome to another SEO Hangout with Josh Brzezinski. Uh, today I've got some interesting leaks for you from uh, Google, and um, so I'll get right to it without any further preamble. Um, okay, so this is from the John Mueller Hangout from January 31st. Uh, looks like John Mueller is doing less Hangouts than he used to. Uh, so that may be good for SEO knowledge or bad, we'll have to see. Um, he mentioned a number of things, uh, some small things and some bigger things. So one of the small things, uh, just a reminder um, that uh, Google, Panda, and Penguin are uh, two algorithms, <laughs> if you've been hiding under a rock, uh, Google, Panda, and Penguin are two algorithms that uh, can derank your site. Uh, Penguin has to do with keyword over optimization, mostly in anchor text. Uh, that means backlinks pointing to you. And Panda has to do with uh, usage metrics, uh, specifically uh, whether your site is high quality or low quality, people are bouncing from it, uh, people don't like it, etc., etc. And it has some other quality or non-quality factors, like it's got garbage text or it's people are talking about it on social, that kind of a thing. Which check mark, which box do you have a check mark in? Um, and of course, so here's, here's my point, is that uh, John Miller recently said, and I quote, uh, they have no manual whitelist to take a site out of Panda or Penguin. Uh, that means they cannot go manually and, and remove Panda or Penguin from a site. People go on the forum and complain as if Google was like um, like uh, their, their local telephone company and cared to help them out <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And if you can, you please just remove that Panda from my site. Thank you. Uh, and they say, you know, um, and just to remind anyone watching these videos, of course, Panda and Penguin, most of you already know this, I'm sure, but Panda and Penguin are, are algorithmic uh, uh, actions taken by a computer. Uh, the manual action, although preempted by a computer, um, things that people check, their, their web spam team checks for manual actions do bubble up on an algorithm, but then a human uh, actual pair of eyeballs checks it and says, yes, penalize this site, or, or no, ignore, or penalize part of it, or, or uh, automatically no follow and ignore a bunch of links pointing to it because they're suspect, that's the partial link penalty, et cetera, et cetera. So just to remind you, there is no whitelist for uh, Panda and Penguin. They cannot fix Panda and Penguin for you. Those are just parts of how their algorithms run, and uh, there's nothing you can do except for make your site uh, more appealing to people and or stop using keyword over-optimization in your anchor text pointing to it and on the page as well. Okay, the next thing he said, this is very interesting. Um, he said that uh, pages that are roboted out, so the robot text, of course, can tell the spiders not to crawl certain pages. Pages that the robot text is telling spiders not to crawl, that are roboted out, they can still collect page rank. You can still link to them, and the page rank will still end up on that site as far as Google is concerned, even though they will not spider the site, or actually they will spider the site, but they will not index it. They will not show it for indexing. And so this means that the page rank comes into the page and it collects there, but it does not pass out to any other page. Now, he said that this will not help the page rank for its content because they ignore the content on the page because it's roboted out. But he did say that this, this these links will still affect the site. So even if you have it roboted out, for good or for ill, which is very interesting, for good or for ill, that the links going to the roboted out page can still affect the site. Um, uh, that page uh, can't be hit by Penguin, uh, and consequently the site cannot be hit by Penguin. Um, in the sense that Penguin is a page-based penalty, and those pages weren't ranking anyway, so even if you, they could be hit by Penguin, um, it wouldn't affect your rankings any noticeably because those pages weren't ranking to begin with because you had them roboted out. Uh, you could still be hit by a manual action uh, in theory because that will hit the whole site. Uh, it can hit the whole site. They have partial manual actions that get part of a site. They can hit just your links. They can hit your site. They can hit the whole site. What's interesting is that this could show that there is kind of a domain rank. Um, because he said it also will positively affect your site. He said, you know, positively or negatively, it can affect your site. So this means that even if that page is roboted out, there is kind of a domain rank. And people have been talking about a domain rank as such a thing in the SEO space for a long time. This seems to indicate by what he said, this is the interesting part, is that um, there seems to be a kind of domain rank where, you know, links come in, but that page is roboted out. So Google can't rank that page, but the, the page rank is going to, you know, redapples.com slash whatever. And so redapples.com is getting a little bit of page rank 
and, uh, and all the other pages, just by virtue of, of being on the same site, same domain, might get a bit of a boost from that. So that, if that's the case, that would be an interesting, you know, hypothetically, just completely hypothetically speaking, from a, um, a black hat point of view, I believe they call it, I think that's what it's called, um, that you could robot out some pages and dump a bunch of page rank to it, and uh, it wouldn't hurt that page from Penguin. It might get you hit for a manual penalty. Uh, but you might actually be able to float the domain up a little bit. So it's an interesting you know, experiment. Someone hypothetically might want to test it simply for academic purposes. Okay, the next thing uh, is another reminder. He mentioned again that Google will be moving to HTTPS soon, secure HTTPS, uh, HTTP, secure socket layer HTTP, uh, very soon, HTTPS, and he really, quote unquote, really recommends that webmasters implement HTTPS soon. And my prediction is just like the mobile requirements, they will soon demand, and the speed requirements, they will soon demand uh, that you serve your site in HTTPS. It'll be a ranking demotion. It certainly won't be a boost. It'll be a ranking demotion if you fail to live up to the standard that they demand because they are the Uber search engine. Um, okay, so the next thing is, uh, and here's another interesting thing. So he talked about uh, Google Plus for ranking, and people you know, are, keep asking you know, what, what signals is, are they using. Everyone uh, assumes, and there seems to be some correlative evidence to show that Google Plus signals help you rank. But the question is, what exactly is it? Is it interaction on your, on your Google Plus profile that links to your site? Uh, is it plus ones on the site? Is it is it people sharing the site in Google Plus on their different Google Plus profiles? Um, John Miller talked about it a little bit, and he mentioned that Google Plus is more tied to Panda, which was, and is social in general is more tied to Panda, which I already reported. We already knew, um, and he said that you should use Google Plus to try and engage with your audience. So he's he's mentioning, as I mentioned before, that it's your profile having discussion and followers and comments on your profile is a good signal to indicate if this profile is attached to your website, that, that there's some quality there. Remember, it's a check mark in the positive quality uh, column for uh, algorithms like Panda, for example. And of course, um, if people are interacting on it and they're logged in for Search Plus Your World, and if they've plus one it or a friend of theirs has plus one it or talked and commented on it a lot, it's going to float up and and... And what they're searching for is on your topic or what your topic of your website and or your associated Google Plus profile is, and you've actually gone to bother to associate the profile on the website in Google and Webmaster Tools, which you can do then, and then only then, will you get some kind of positive bonus or benefit. It might float up, bubble up a little bit in the rankings for related uh, 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 synonym searches, semantic searches. Uh, but also, he said you want to uh, you want to you might want to watch the hangout because I wasn't quite sure what exactly what he meant. But it's he said it's more about looking at the website usage from Google Plus and to see what people are coming from Google Plus, see what they like and see what they don't like. So he seemed to this is the interesting part. He seemed to intimate or indicate that there was some kind of algorithmic uh, um, uh, there was something that the algorithms were actually looking at when people coming from Google Plus or searching from Google Plus uh, or to your site, uh, how they are interacting with your site. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, it's interesting, it's tantalizing, this little, little tidbits of information sometimes that you drop out. It's hard to say exactly what that means though. Um, it certainly gives more indication directly from Google that yeah, they're gonna be using Google Plus somehow as a ranking factor. So if you're not on Google Plus now, you, you definitely should consider Consider it, uh, because uh, that is going to be definitely some kind of a ranking signal. Uh, so we'll have to be watching exactly what those are going to be. Okay, next, the infamous press release was mentioned. So, press releases. Back in the day, in ye olde SEO, uh, a lot of people would get uh, well, a lot of things, but press releases among uh, one of them. Uh, and... Uh, they would get, uh, of course, search phrase uh, rich anchor text, exact match uh, keyword anchor text linking back to the site. Uh, of course, they, Google has said you can't do this anymore. It's just like article directories and article uh, websites. If you hadn't realized that, you cannot do that anymore, by the way. Uh, and um, so, so someone asked 
someone who had been sleeping under a rock for, for the last six months to a year asked about that. And so John Mueller said, you know, of course, we do have algorithms that pretty much automatically clean that up. They automatically ignore press releases that have entrench links. He says that I, and he quote, a link to your website is less of a problem. What he meant was a URL based link. So if I was trying to link to Red Apples, the, the, the anchor text in the press release would be, you know, uh, uh, www.redapples.com. But of course, that's the problem is that people will get confused. They think if they're just linking to the URL, they get a special pass. Um, uh, as if uh, there's not an exact match query um, keyword in the URL. If you have, you know, buyredapples.com and your link is buyredapples.com, then that is going to, it's still exact match query anchor text. That's still a problem, right? So they have uh, algorithms that will automatically take care of that. When take care of that, meaning they will, uh, he said, that um, they will uh, ignore these automatically. And if you have too many of these, if it's a, a certain, uh, of a certain percentage or higher, that, and he says, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what he said, that you will bubble up to the manual team and the, uh, Either the, uh, the algorithms will clean it up, and then they will bubble up to the manual team when it gets to a high, higher percentage, and the manual team will take a look to see if you've got too many of those kinds of links. And if you do, they'll either give you a partial penalty if they can't tell if you did it or not, or if it's not clear whether you did it or not, and that partial penalty will be against the links only, or they'll give you a full manual penalty against the entire site. If every single one of your links says buy red apples from 100 different press release sites, and that's all you have, and that's all you did. Um, and don't forget, even if it's in URL, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it's a search phrase, uh, you that they're still looking at that as uh, unnatural, and it is too much of a risk to do uh, these days, in my opinion. Not even at 10%. Maybe 10% at absolute most, if you absolutely have to. If you whatever you've done, you still can't rank. But I would prefer to do no match anchor text I, um, at all whatsoever because it's safer. Um, okay, speaking of link types and risky links or not risky links, so guest blog posts were also mentioned. Um, and here's another interesting thing that John Mueller mentioned. He mentioned, he recommended that if you're doing guest blog posts, of course, Matt Katz recently put out his video, you know, or his blog post, that guest blog posts are done, stick a fork in it, quote unquote. Um, because obviously, duh, people have been buying guest blog posts for um, years now. And, uh, you know, Google being right on the mark has finally caught up and realized this and has proclaimed that done and, and, and in essence really proclaimed pretty much all of linking done um, uh, at that point. Um, so someone asked John Mueller about it, and John Mueller said that uh, he recommended that he would not wait to clean up search phrase anchors that he recommends webmasters clean up uh, any anchor text with search phrases pointing to their site immediately. As then he says, it will be less likely, uh, and it was, and, and any penalty that you have will be likely to be less severe rather than waiting Google to catch you. So he said that he would rec, and this, so this is interesting. He would recommend that you remove any uh, exact match search phrases pointing to your site now in guest blog post or otherwise, actually. Because although it will bring down your ranking slightly, he said it's going to be less severe than what's going to happen when they catch you. And quite frankly, they're getting pretty darn good at catching uh, sites that have exact uh, match anchor text and search phrase anchor text. The only sites that get a pass are big, huge sites that have existed for years and have a page rank of like six or seven, and have been around for a very, very long time, and are highly trusted, like the New York, the New York Times or something like that. Um, that's very, very few sites. Uh, so, whether or not you want to take him up on that uh, uh, advice, I'm not sure if it's wise to go messing with your uh, anchor text or wise to go um, uh, editing your SEO, uh, especially your anchors and your links and deleting links or disavowing links before you have any kind of a penalty because you don't know what they're um, going to be catching. You don't know what they're still going to be looking at. So it's, it really is a six of one and a half dozen in the other. Um, uh, it, it really depends. You really need to have a good SEO person look at your backlink profile and make an educated guess how much you would derank yourself from removing your search phrase anchor text uh, as versus waiting for uh, you know, Penguin or Manual Penalty to come along to hit you.
But uh, as, as of this time, there are some sneaky ways around Penguin. Um, and so if you've been watching my previous videos, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. And so, um, you know, you might still be able to run that gamut for a little while. The, uh, the, uh, the epitaph on, on, on uh, Black Hattery may not be yet be written either, to paraphrase the Immortal Mad Cuts. Okay, so... And then he was, so we're hitting all the hits. And then so then he was asked about negative SEO. And he said, well, you know, people said, okay, well, if these search phrase anchor tests can hurt you, well, then obviously negative SEO can hurt you, John. And then so John Mueller, Mr. Mueller, um, kind of waffled and he admitted that in practice, quote unquote, that um, it would be difficult to do, but, but theoretically we know it's easy and he's already kind of admitted that theoretically, meaning really, <laughs> actually, practically, it is quite possible to negative SEO people who are already on the cusp, who already have a very high search phrase anchor text pointing towards them, or already have a lot of um, guest blog posts pointing at them, already have a lot of press releases pointing at them. Well, if all they have, if, if like 40 or 50% of their backlink profiles press releases with those actual uh, match anchors, well then order about 10,000 more. Uh, with exact match anchors, and you'll see them rank, 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 and then boom, they'll be hit by something. So negative SEO is unfortunately pretty easy to do. It's quite rampant, um, and so you should be taking a look at your link profile. You should be looking at your rankings. You should have a good SEO person who can consult for you and with you uh, and knows what to look for and is watching to see if these links are getting made so you can deal with it uh, quickly, if, uh, if at all possible, if necessary, rather. Okay, and uh, okay. So the next question was about the uh, rel canonical. Some people have been wondering how to do the rel canonical, uh, and usually the rel canonical is used for um, duplicate content, especially with uh, URL parameters. Uh, back in 2011 and early 2012, Panda was coming out, or people thought it was Panda coming out, and hitting sites that had a lot of duplicate content, especially in regards to URL parameters. And I think that it's a separate algorithm now. I think they just rolls out and looks at your URL parameters and sees if you have 100,000 pages, you know, that are essentially the same page, that just, you know, red shoes, pink shoes, blue shoes, all that's the only thing that changes. And so they have algorithms to remove all those pages from the index. And it's a huge problem because it will uh, remove your internal page rank, it'll kill any external page rank, pointing those pages, it de-indexes de -indexes those pages. Uh, bigger sites just seem to get a ranking bonus. And so sites were tanking uh, because you know suddenly they lose forty percent of their pages or sixty percent of the pages because they were all paid they're all URL parameters that Google was hungry to spider uh, now they are getting a bloated index and it costs money to maintain all that and it's not providing any extra value to the customer and so to save yourself from doing this you can use a rail canonical on all those duplicate pages pointing back to the canonical version the shoes page as opposed to the pink blue white red or green shoes. Uh, you can also use, um, if you have articles or you have pages that are uh, sequential, that are serial in nature, so you have page 1 of 30, page 2 of 30, page 3 of 30, you can also use the rel next prev uh, um, uh, HTML code uh, to do that as well. So someone asked about the rail canonical and how does it work. So John Mueller uh, mentioned, so I'll just, it's a good reminder, general reminder for anyone trying to set up the rail canonical. Um, I will mention here how to make it work better in case you happen to be trying to set it up for whatever reason. Um, so first off, remember, it's a signal, not a directive. So that means that the 301 is a directive. Um, they will follow it. They have no choice but to follow it. The, uh, the real canonical is a signal. They choose whether to honor it or not. And so to make, so to make them honor it, to make sure that they are they're uh, processing URL canonical properly, so you don't have any duplicate content problems, which can also be a, a panda issue as well. Um, they they check. Uh, John Mueller admitted they check various signals, and so this and when the signals do not conflict, then they will honor the URL canonical. I, I repeat, if the signals conflict that they check, they will probably not honor the URL canonical. But if the signals they check do not conflict, then they will probably honor the URL canonical. And here are the signals that they check. Uh, one, the two pages have to be virtual, virtually identical. Uh, they can be like 10% different, but 90% the, the two pages have to be more or less the same. Um, 
if you've done a re reciprocal redirect, so you've got any weird redirections, you have like a 301 to a rel canonical to a 301 to, they won't honor that because I think you're just making a mistake of some kind of server error or something like that. Um, he said, and I quote, which one looks nicer? Uh, uh, which homepage URL is shorter? They will actually check to see. So if there's some long string that would be hard to remember, some kind of uh, URL parameter, blah, 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 and slash new page, then they'll think that's probably a better version. So not only are they looking for the canonical version, they're looking for the better version in their opinion, and that's the one they want to serve. So that's the one they're going to honor as the canonical version, regardless of what you say, what is canonical or not. So these are some of the signals that you have to watch, right? So quality is a factor. Um, which which page has the most external links? Which page has the most internal links? If all the internal links are pointing to this page, and then it, but it wants to rail canonical to this page, well, this page here has to have all the internal links pointing to it, or, or sorry, it's backwards in my screen, pointing to it, or rather, at least some of the pages, uh, internal links pointing to it, and some external links pointing to it probably wouldn't hurt either, because that's telling them that, okay, we've moved our home page, we've moved our blog page, our, new, our product page is a new page, you know, it's products 2014. This is the new canonical version where everyone should go, you know, that kind of an issue. Because the 301 and the canonical are supposed to be kind of interchangeable in, in a sense, in a sense. But again, the 301 is a directive, whereas the canonical is a signal. Uh, so all of that has to line up and it has to make sense to the user, quote unquote, uh, for them to honor the canonical. Um, uh, uh, also, the sitemap can't be dirty. They can't point to a home page and then another home page. can only point to the one home page, and that's the one they're going to honor. So all those are all the kind of signals that they're going to check. If there's any duplicate content out there on the web for this page, they might think that that's the canonical version of that content. So if some scraper has scraped you and they've got a page rank of 7, and if you do a search for a random sentence, or half a sentence with a period and another half a sentence, that's a better way to do it, actually, in quotations, search for that on Google. And if you find that someone else's page is ranking for your content, um, that means that they think that's the canonical version because it's the better version, it's the more page rank version, it's the nicer looking, the shorter URL, whatever. So that's fascinating that they said all that stuff. Shorter URL and things like that, it's a nicer looking page, newer design is what he probably means by that, better usage metrics, not hit by Panda. Uh, all those things matter. And so if you're trying to get a canonical to work, those are things that you uh, have to keep in mind. I know a lot of my customers recently asked about that. So those, that's, that's what you have to keep in mind. Okay, and last but not least, our favorite fair weather friend, Penguin. Uh, Penguin is a linking algorithm, as I mentioned. And somebody asked him about Penguin, and he mentioned this. He leaked a little, uh, little bit more information this time. It was interesting. He said that there's a Penguin Plus and a penguin light. So there's like a penguin double the calories and a penguin extreme and a penguin light. Uh, and he said that the penguin light will just kind of, you know, slowly trickle your, your rankings down like this, but the penguin extreme will be like, boom, like a waterfall in your analytics or, or in your traffic or in your, or your what have you. Um, and he said uh, the plus will pull the entire site down because it, although there's a page-based penalty, uh, that negative page rank juice is going to flow to all your internal links, assuming that that page they hit is a, is linked to all the rest. And given that it's usually your index page, and the index page, like a pyramid, links down to all the other pages, that negative juice is going to flow through the whole site and derank almost the whole thing. Um, he said with the penguin light, though, he said something very interesting. He said that you can recover from it slightly. He said even if they don't lift the penguin, said so your rankings can still get a little bit better because you can make it at quote unquote higher quality and this will get it better rankings. Now this is very interesting. He's mentioned this before. He's mentioned this for over a year. And there's been a lot of speculation that Penguin and Panda talked with each other or that if you're hit by one and then another one hits you, then you really get mega hit, you know? And so this gives some confirmation that Penguin and Panda work together, at least Penguin Light uh, is, uh, I assume that's going to be my guess is that if you're hit by Penguin, that's a check mark in the non-quality column. Because remember, Pando works on usage metrics, and then that will flag you up to be checked, a deeper check, and they do a spider, a spider of your full site before uh, for, for Panda before hitting you. And then they will check, you know, you have garbage text, do you have people talk about you on social? Do you have duplicate text, other images on your page? 
Do you have um, bad usage metrics or, or do you have images on your page and do people like you? So another bad check mark column is did Penguin hit you? You know, or check mark this way for you when you're looking. Um, that's Penguin Light, Penguin Extreme, Penguin Hardcore. Well, just boom, just it doesn't really matter if Panda hits you after that because you're ranking on page 10. So then you go from page 9 to page 10, whoop de doo. But if Penguin Light hits you, it's a check mark in the in the non-quality columns. That's why so many penguin sites can be hit, look like they're also hit by Panda, they're so susceptible to it. Um, it's kind of like, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an unfortunate catch-22. It's like you're hit by one and then the other one drags you down as well because you're hit by the other one. So that kind of confirms that there's two different kinds of penguin, as people have speculated, and that penguin, at least penguin light and Panda can work together. Maybe, I, my speculation, is that Penguin could very well be, at least the way you're talking about it, it sounded like Penguin was a, a trust factor, a quality factor in, in the Panda algorithm. Okay, so that is my SEO diatribe for today. It's not very diatribe just kind of informational. Um, uh, again, uh, you can always contact me with SEO questions uh, if you or if you need any more SEO information. My contact info is, uh, my email is joshbashinsky at gmail.com. You can follow me at Twitter at joshbashinsky. And you can also watch, uh, watch, not wash, you can wash too. But you can watch, I shouldn't do these things drunk, I really shouldn't. You, should, you can watch SEO videos uh, at, on my YouTube channel at uh, slash youtube.com slash jbashins, J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S. So that's it for today, and uh, we, we'll see you next week, and uh, good luck in the service. Bye-bye.